And Christy asked, are we doing low-key tonight? Pff, of course. Of course we're doing low-key tonight. Um, hey, everybody. It's Harry again. Um, still feeling on the way. That's why I didn't do wall yesterday. And I am still not even feel, feeding, feeling the best right now. And I'm getting ready to, to dose back up here. I'll to dose midway of the show. I'm okay. I'm walking around. I can breathe. And I am got out of my NyQuil-induced coma. But, you know, still, you know, not totally all the way there yet. Still, you know, still feeling the effects. Um, usually, um, by the way, like, usually when I have a cold, I like to stay inside my Ni NyQuil-induced coma. I just wake up, go back to sleep, wake up, go back to sleep, do it for a few, stay up for a little bit, you know, just to get my bounds, look at the news, and see what the heck is going on, and keep going back and back and forth. And you go right back in the, Ni you know, the NyQuil-induced comas that I go into when I'm sick because it's what I do because if I'm up and awake while I am sick I have this unsatiable hunger I eat I eat a lot of food most people don't eat when they're sick I on the hand eat everything everything I get my hands on to um, pie cakes um, you know I, I'll, I'll make food just to make it just to eat it I love eating food when I'm sick. It's one of the main times you'll see me really like, who will like just smash a whole bunch of food. Is when I'm sick, and that's how I like also know that I'm getting sick because I keep wanting to eat. I don't stop eating. I just want food, and it's like okay, I think I'm gonna get sick. There's other things too that probably a little bit more TMI that like gives me like cues and stuff on my body, it's just just knowing my body and how it reacts and how I know I'm getting sick. So I like to take precautions, you know. Um, of course, I, I try to deny it, you know, like, oh, no, no, I, no I'm not getting sick. It's possible. Oh, fair, fair enough. You know, I've got too much stuff in, you know, in front of me, and I, or I've got too much stuff to do, so I try to push through it. And But I've learned to not push through it, stop, wait, you know, just wait it out, get felt, feel better, and, you know, eventually just go ahead and, you know, like, meet on through. That being said, like I said, um, I probably won't, <laughs> I'm probably going to keep this one probably short and sweet because, like I said, I do kind of just like, I don't feel like talking that much because, um, my throat still hurts, um, and I don't have that much air, so, you know, I was kind of hoping like, a, uh, uh, hey, Wicked Kinder, um, so, so please bear with me if I have, like, long pauses, or if I have to hit the um, the mic dump button because coughing. Also, if I forget to hit that button, I also apologize. I am pulling through. I'm at the last end of this call, and my God, I can feel it, and I'm almost at the end point. You know, it's I'm getting there. So, so thank you for all those that are watching. Thank you to the people that are rooting for me and like messaging me through different varying apps. You know, making sure I. I'm okay. Don't give me, you know, don't worry. I have pl plenty of drugs at the house. Um, not a sponsor, by the way. Just, I just, you know, I, I do NyQuil and Alcazar. It's what I do. I just chug every two hours. I do a drug and I just stay in this coma. Um, but, um, um, today's Pi Day. Um, so it's the 3.1, you know, so 3.14 if you write your days out like this, so 3.14.118, which is technically not the other digits of pi, but it's close enough, there's nothing like the real pi day, which was for 3.141, uh, 2015, uh, when it was 3, we would write 3.14, you know, 15, but anyways, it, guess that's point. anyways, it's pi day, um, so it's March 3rd, um, the 14th, aka 3.14, which everyone knows, the simplest form, forms of pi, because most people who do anything with math, 3.14 is perfectly fine for pi. Oh, sorry, excuse me, sorry, um, Pi is basically just the defined as just the, the is the original defined as the ratio of a circle circumference to a dia diameter, and it's basically it all. This is just a ratio of the circumference to the diameter. So basically, we take circle, circle, and the diameter of the circle. But anyways, but like it's usually like this, these like this geek thing. Like I remember like going up in like a lot of geek culture, like a lot of like the party trick was like how many digits of pi can you memorize? You know, how far in pi can you go? And you would get these people that would go to events that could go like. <laughs> out 
just like all these different number pi. You sit there, just you're fact checking them. I was like, wow, I can't believe I memorized pi to this point. Yeah, you know, I used to think it was cool when I was younger, and then, you know, the you know the laptops and netbooks got smaller, and I go like, that's cool and all, but I got that right here, man. I, you know, I, or that, and I've never really needed um, I need never really needed uh, pi that you know. You know, like to to those extent that number is out there, for th that that type of precise numbers. So you know, that's me. You know, other people that need it, cool. You you physics and stuff like that. You needed it out there, but anyways. But yeah, so it's pi day. A lot of people like to celebrate pi. Talk about different nerdy things all day. I did it to myself. I had pizza for lunch. Like I said, unsatiable hunger. I know it's carby and it's such crap, but hey, it's pi day. I also had pie. I had Oreo cream cookie pie. I'm going to have some more pie when I leave here today. I love pies. Um, so, um, you know, pies are like, pie, certain pies and cakes. I love the stuff, love the food, but it's really bad for you. So, I like to take it in small birds. But anyway, I'm gonna, probably going to have pie after this. I'm going to enjoy that pie. Um, sorry, I got, you know, started to sort of laugh in my own head. I started thinking of like the whole of the rock pie tacos. There's all kinds of pie. I'm not doing that. My foot hurts. Sorry. Sorry. <coughs> Oh man, I even tried. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I I'm gonna feel better one of these days. I swear, and be able to, because it's not really. <clears throat> All right. So, other nerdy thing in the news today <clears throat> that that I'm sure every you guys have saw about and woke up to because I woke up to this morning and <clears throat> sorry to that uh, Stephen Hawking. The, uh, the Stephen Hawking is dead at age 76, uh, so it stinks. He was like, uh, it was like, I'm not gonna kid myself and be one of these people that are like those, like the fake intellectuals that like to spout off a lot of different of his theories and stuff like this. That 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 he's dead. Especially trying to remember the, the stuff that he's did because, to be perfectly honest, like that's not my favorite branch of science and. I could kind of get what he was getting to, but it's not since it's not my branch of science. It, it, it most of that stuff goes way over my head, and most people are like, "Oh, come on, Harry!" Like, come on. Most of the stuff he would talk about goes way over your freaking head too, unless you're really in that field. Um, but you know, he, but he had, but he was one of the, like just like Neil deGrasse Tyson and a lot of the other scientists. You noticing that he was very much in the public specter, and that he also had a great sense of humor, and it was also always trying to, like, always feel like he was trying to, like, a lot of the scientists were try also trying to bridge the gap to us non, like, if that wasn't your science, so it was kind of like the, uh, the plumber uh, physicist, you know, they're just trying to bridge that gap that, yes, you can be in this field too, you just have to concentrate and study into it. Um, but, you know, but I took that as that I went to a different field while, you know, you know, I, I do computers and this is what I do, and I'm not even saying I'm like in huge computer sciences, there's just huge computer scientists that are smarter than I am, and but the thing is, like, uh, like I said, like his big humor, like he would go on to different shows, like he was on Star Trek, he did uh, Big Bang Theory, he did, um, he was actually he, he just put himself on Futurama, uh, The Simpsons, so it was like you know, like he understood like the big brain and uh, the intelligence that he did have. He also understood that you know, but he like I said, he was had sense of humor. Joked about himself. He even joked about his own condition. Um, even though he had like he he had made some quirks about running over people's toes and stuff like that. The sucky thing is though, like what does happen when someone like this, there's also some sense of humor that did have a public light like that, is that a lot of people like to bring up a lot of the bad stuff that he did after he did. It's like come on, look the guy. The guy had a lot of great accomplishments. Um, was he perfect? Heck no, nobody is. Which the only thing that kind of shocked me is like, hey, you know, like if I, when I go, if someone's going to bring out like some of the bad things that I did, that's the only thing they want to talk about on the day that I die, that freaking sucks. You know, even though like, especially like, you know, if if someone wants to bring up the bad accomplishments with Stephen Hawking, like some bad stuff on the day that he died and he's done so much, you know, what's the chance the rest of us got? Alright, that being said, so rest in peace, Stephen Hawking's. I see it. Yes, I am going fast through this because I am, like I said, can't really talk, can't really breathe. So I'm gonna, get, I'm I'm hustling and bustling through this thing. The one thing I have been reading today, um, um, because like um, today's also another good day for me because I also had the report for I took Gunther to the uh, Nika today to get her um, 
ten month uh, checkup from um, or eight month out of the uh, the neonatal intensive care unit, uh, which great checkup. Uh, everything was doing everything. Everything's on task. The only thing she's still going behind on is crawling. She still isn't really crawling properly yet. She's doing like this whole three point head crawl where she's on her feet and she's like bridging and using that kind of like crab walk backwards to crawl with, which it's a bad habit. We're trying to correct it for her. We're going to get some um, fit. Pro we got to, well, we did get the recommendation for physical therapy, so we're probably going to use that to go with the insurance company to go get some physical therapy for her. So gangbusters on that. But anyways, the thing that has been blowing my mind this whole thing right here is um, um well, uh, this is probably the only going to protect people who uses Windows and you people who uses BitTorrent. But this should scare anybody just for the, well, the way of, the way that least this attack was done. Here, I'll bring it up. All right. So Trojan uh, Trojan Eyes BitTorrent software hijacked 400,000 PC, PCs last week. Yeah, so apparently, Media Git, a uh, BitTorrent client, got um, someone did a not a man in the middle. What is it called? A uh, um, basically they got it in a way of their update to the update server, and they tricked a bunch of uh, the media client when they were asking for the update to go to their own different client here and. And upload their their malware into it to put a Trojan backdoor to, to put in a uh, Bitcoin mining software in the backside of it and started to slow down a bunch of different people's machines to bit to mine bitcoins. Usually, like I said, like you can. Uh, I did not know Hawking's also sang in a Pink Floyd song. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Did not know that. Oh wow. All right, hold on, dropping the knowledge. Um. Of course, I'm not a huge Pink Floyd head. Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, where was I? It was a good song. Have you been there? Oh, where? Oh, oh. What? How long have you been there? What up? Or, or, how many of you guys are in this here talking? You guys have just been sitting there listening to me like die with my voice. I remember like dying. Well, like, I, I tried to go to the, the, the We Are Libertarians extreme, and I saw Daryl Perry, and I was like, oh, no, 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 close. <laughs> Do you not like the establishment anarchy? <clears throat> Anyways, yeah, back on point. Anyways, okay, so you, you guys have apparently been there sitting in the backdrop. I didn't even know you guys were there, just been in this fog. But anyways, so, like, I'm going to... I'll put, I don't know if you guys see this link from the um, hacker news. I'll drop it here in the, uh, the Twitch stream there. And what I'm talking about, which is it's 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 a pretty cool hack because like um because it's more of the same thing that happened to CC Cleaner last week, and it's probably affecting a lot of different more machines like that, where they you know get certificate signed to like go back to, to install backdoors and like mat on. Um, people's machines just getting updates which sucks because usually like the thing that protects you for most malware or most viruses hey update your machine just update your freaking machine and you know but this is just you know probably bad practices inside the media get that exe um, um, update process because they probably you know granted it's a bit torn client so they don't probably have the massive um uh, the staff that looks over each time they pu publish an update or look at all the code, and eventually someone's going is going to go find a back door to do something. So, so one thing you can always predict yourself from something like this: for uh, if you got download BitTorrent, or you're going to use software that you know doesn't have a huge much of like you know support staff for it, and open up a virtual machine and run it in the virtual machine and just bring over the software that you need from there. What do you guys think, or or is this all new to you, um, Ryan Holden, uh, niece? Ryan Holden has derailed low key water. And everyone wants to talk about this Pink Floyd song. It's Stephen Hawking's. <laughs> That's where the chat has gone. Ryan, niece. Anybody? 
All right, so I think I'm alone again. Oh, there, there we are. Okay, I was in a, actually in a virtual machine and trying to talk, and it wasn't accepting my push to talk because of the isolation that I have. As we were talking about that exact same thing, <laughs> so yeah, we need so we need isolation uh, from applications, obviously. So one of the, one of the earliest ways of doing it is virtual machines that it helps isolate your computer from you know potentially dangerous software like this, but. Mm -hmm. As Docker and those types of technologies become more prevalent, we're going to start seeing a lot more um, isolation of, t of applications, much more than they are now. Oh yeah. Uh, the problem is, is how do these how do these applications then talk to each other in a secure way? Um, that's going to become the challenge. But we still need to do something to have a, a, a your computer have your secure known software on it and mm -hmm. then everything else you want to run in, a, in an isolated environment or a VM or something like that yeah yeah I think like uh, one thing they did was talk about like Windows Defender was able to pick it up so it didn't get too large because a lot of the downloads and everything was happening out of because like, the monitoring base that Windows Defender does notice like this, a lot of the stuff that it was downloading and working on was outside the, the ordinary so it kind of like oh no this is outside the ordinary so this type of stuff that's where it's really good for your like you know like your antivirus software or your intrusion detection and prevention system like hey if they've been up there and they know what is what your network is supposed to be doing and it starts doing something weird you know this is when red flags are going up so like you know getting a good baseline of what your network is supposed to do also helps too but when it comes to like uh isn't it that uh, that new version of windows 10 like where every everything is supposed to come through the windows store to put everything in its own little sandbox yeah, Windows Windows S is what you're talking about. Yeah. So it, it's really kind of a a reimagining of the initial um, Surface version of of uh, Windows that was that was only you could only run Windows Store applications. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is is that Windows has got such a long history and rich eco ecosystem of applications that are not going to be finding their way into the store anytime mm -hmm. soon. There's just millions and millions and millions of them. It's just not going to happen. Um, so that's something that they're not going to be able to take um, any kind of control over right away. But um, it does provide for an opportunity if we were able to start from now going forward and do everything in that store type of framework. There's a lot more of that isolation. And Docker is getting built into Windows 10 and it's already kind of already there so there's all this stuff that Windows is trying to do to help protect everybody mm -hmm. uh, making making them patch their software for instance I mean if people weren't patching their OS's like they weren't before with Windows 7 and other older versions this stuff would have started propagating a lot a lot easier right so the fact that they are getting forced updates does help this yep. you know the situation Yep. Okay. You say Windows Defender found it, so I mean, let's let's give the credit where credits due. They are trying hey, to do what they can. Windows Defender is a badass antivirus. Okay, Windows Defender is badass just because, uh, because there's so many people using Windows Defender. It kind of you know it's you know if your Windows 10 is doing something different than any other Windows 10 device that it's out there, Windows Defender is going to pick it up. Well, and that's the thing too is that if so many people are using Windows Defender, they're taking that information, and everybody was crying spyware, spyware. But they're taking that information, and they're not selling it. They they don't have a division at Microsoft that sells that data anymore. Right. Um, so they're only doing that. They're keeping that information internally, but they're using it to fine tune Defender to make it better yeah. and to find these things and to help other people. If other if somebody's got caught, they can immediately blast out to Defender updates to get everybody else protected. Right, yeah, Defender updates or Windows 10, you know, or, yeah, quick Wind Windows 10 update, you know, like, Windows 10 is, it's good to operate, it's just still Windows 8, but Windows 10 is pretty good, I will give you that, um, but, yeah, that's what, one of the good thing about a lot of the free antivirus software is that they use, like, that's where, like, that you can t tell they use a lot of their free clients just to test or just to notice what things are doing to harden out to make the better of the f the paid clients better, or you know there's a lot of the paid like antivirus softwares that are left or they just they just do more than what you know like Windows Defender can do or just make life easier, especially like if you um, 
if you have uh, like family and stuff like that that you're watching out for, uh, like a paid antivirus software that's pretty good is like Avast. To me, is I like using Avast be because it's the it's idiot proof for my for people's computers that I don't want to watch all the time, and they can pay and they everything just set up for. Them. So it's like. You know, it's easily lets you know, like they can pay. They get the VP, they get their virtual private uh, network on when they want to do their banking on. It'll load if they want to like. Well, I want to download this software, and they don't want to go through the hassle of loading up a virtual machine. You can load it up through a vast um, uh, sandbox, and you they, you send it into a vast little into a sandbox, and they'll run scans on it, and they'll tell you whether or not this file is good or not. I actually, did that to a file that Nice sent through um, on the Discord for his. Uh, I can't remember what game he sent through. I sent that straight to a vast to run it through the freaking sandbox to make sure he wasn't trying to scam us all and put back doors on our computers. You should be like, you should trust me. Yeah, I don't trust nobody. Um, so, yeah. Um, we should probably, I should probably do that on a Friday after like a sort of like a gaming thing to show people how to run Docker or just like a virtual quick virtual machines to show you guys how to like this is how you download something in a virtual machine and create something be because also like we even when in virtual machines you got a lot of the anti a lot of the viruses and malware that are out there they've learned ways to they learned that people are doing this in a virtual machine so you've got to be able to give the machine more cores than just one single core uh, I've uh, you have to give it at least two or four cores, which some of you AMD people may have a problem giving some four cores. Sorry, AMD. <laughs> well, the other the other thing too is the if you remember the um, the ransomware that hit really big mm -hmm. uh, last year. Yeah. One thing they noticed that was when they put the software into a virtual machine that was isolated, mm -hmm. the the van the ransomware wouldn't activate because the ransomware would then require the client be able to go to the internet, look up a specific DNS uh, mm -hmm. entry mm -hmm. that was hidden and nobody was going to be looking for, and only then would it then acknowledge the fact that it was on the internet and then activate. Yeah. So you didn't know what the payload was going to do until you actually put it out there for it to do that. So that's just one of the things that people are, that the 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 virus writers and the ransomware writers are doing are trying to ensure that they're not isolated in order to kick off their payloads. Now, the fact that you weren't you were isolated meant you were safe and it wasn't going to run. That's fine, but it hurt the people trying to determine what was what the software was doing right. for a period of time until they could figure that out. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. So like, you know, you know, so just goes to show you sometimes it's better just have a backup, be able to nuke your OS from orbit and just start over, especially when you get stuff like this or or if you notice your machine is running slower and stuff like that, to also understand like what's going on with your machine, to understand like, whoa, 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 this thing's yesterday was running fine and, you know, this I updated this thing and started running like dog crap, what the heck happened? Well and that's a that's a different change too, because remember ten years ago it would be you needed to reinstall your windows every six months in order for it to keep it clean because it would always get kind of just bogged down with gunk yeah. applications you've loaded and it wasn't virus stuff that was causing the problem it was just just the normal flow of, of the way windows works but now mm -hmm. people are running their systems for a year two years three years because it's gotten better it's a um, and gotten cleaner and and there is something to be said that maybe a lot of people in Ten years ago, were running not botnets and didn't know it, mm -hmm. because the issue with um, with the way the software was written before is that it could hide itself inside the o inside the OS layer, the Ring Zero layer, that you couldn't really detect it. You couldn't prevent that from happening. So a re a reformat was the only way to really clean that stuff out. So a lot of people could have been infected and just know it didn't know it then either. Hmm. But with the with the, yeah. the stuff from Windows Seven on, they're, they're, they've isolated Ring Zero a lot, so there's a lot more protection on the base OS to prevent that. You ever wonder maybe that's the main reason? Well, one of the reasons some people didn't like Windows Vista is because they brought up a lot of you know malware and botnets from from their XP when they upgraded. Or do you think Vista it's still just sucks? <laughs> Most people I know didn't. We always so in the IT world, we always recommended against doing in place upgrades of soft of your OS for a lot of for that reason and a lot of other reasons. Yeah. Uh, but now it's to the point where you can because the the upgrade process is now almost doing that for you. It just it lays down a new image, 
and then copy settings over. It doesn't really do an in place upgrade like it used to do anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, ransom. Yeah, ransomware sucks. Um, oh yeah, and that's the other thing too. When they when they started locking down Ring Zero like that, all the antivirus software people got very upset because they were hooking into that in order to run their software. So Microsoft would write APIs that they could use, but they didn't want to do that. They wanted their software. They didn't want to have to re-engineer. So they they spent a lot of time yelling about it. And, P, and then they turned on I mean, when when XP first turned on uh, the firewall, Surface Pack Two. They turned on the, the built-in firewall. Everybody complained about that. Everybody complained about UAC, mm -hmm. as uh, Wicked Ender noticed, you know, mentioned. So every time Microsoft has tried to crack down on security, users have complained. Just like with the the forcing of the updates, everybody yeah. complains about it, but in the end of the day, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. It's shut the heck up. Speaking of updates, wasn't this wasn't there a Windows update yesterday? Second Tuesday of the month was yesterday. How uh, many? I know my work workstation did update. Uh, I don't think I've updated my. Home how many? Yet. How many people you think listening to us hasn't restarted their machines since that Tuesday's update? I'm gonna guess but majority. <laughs> Well, I got notified saying you got an update to tell us when you want to do it. So, you know, I said, okay, yeah. do it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I, you know, like, uh, when I used to have the of this Chromebook machines, I would always get these people's like, my Chromebook is just messing up. And I walk up to their Chromebook, there's an update for Chrome, hit reset, and, you know, and I reset it, get the update, and like, oh, no, this machine started working correctly because there probably was a flaw in your code and they updated it, or you just needed to run an update because something was messed up, or it just takes a simple restart. The one thing I did notice with running Docker or different virtual machines is that Chrome works better in a virtual machine where you could tell it you get this many resources and suck it okay <laughs> yeah, chrome likes to just glob as much as it can yeah to make it run better chrome works so much better when i give it two cores and only six gigs of ram <laughs> because if i just let it to let go of my system it will take 16 gigs of ram like four cores and just be over there just chugging along with like five tabs open. I'm like, well, what? You're not doing anything. <laughs> so why are you taking so many resources? So it's easy, you know, to me it's easy. Yeah. To, I've got, hmm? I've got 32 gig memory, right? Yeah. The 16 cores. I should not have any problems running anything. I get 15 tabs open and I'm watching like three or four YouTube channels open. Yeah. And they all take up a video slots and all that stuff, and it starts to go. You go to I switch over and use Edge, and it's like a third of the footprint. You know, oh, it's yeah. like what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, it's like come on, Chrome. It's, Chrome has become the most bloated of the of the uh, Internet Explorer type of applications, yep. browser applications, right? I mean, Firefox was bad, and the, but they've got a recent update that's Ooh. actually made it much smaller. Yes, and Edge is very good in that regard so it's chrome now that's kind of like uh, you need to you need to lose some weight there buddy firefox did a redo they redid their entire uh, uh, uh browser their launch that they did that sucked that that browser that came out at launch and then month afterwards well, yeah. that sucked okay i can never had i was so angry at that it's so much better now <laughs> yeah and they, that's, fixed, they fixed some <laughs> of the issues so, if you hated that version of Firefox, jump back into it, try it out again. Um, but yeah, another thing is there's also more f browsers out there than there is Chrome, Edge, and um, Firefox. There's more browsers. Um, there's not as many as there used to be, but you know. Well, you can write your own browser if you get. Uh, you can download the free version of Microsoft uh, uh, Studio, and one of the things that you can do is as the first training parts of that is build a browser. It's not got any functionality other than you can browse HTML sites, right? But it's so it doesn't have any, you know, support for uh, third party applications, a lot of stuff, extensions. But it still works as a browser. If you want to write your own. <laughs> it's not that hard anymore. Um, uh, I need someone to moderate the um, the Twitch chat. Wicked Kenner just said people forget that when Internet Explorer 6 came out, it was the stuff. It was. Internet Explorer Six was rocking. I don't know, but I don't know about that. No, I remember the fight. I remember the fight between <laughs> Netscape and Internet Explorer. 
right? Yeah. And there was a time where Internet Explorer 1.0 was really kind of basic, and Netscape had all the bells and whistles. But by the time Internet Explorer 3 came out, mm-hmm. it had surpassed Netscape to where Netscape had IPO, made a bunch of money, and then they collapsed almost immediately because Microsoft was handing out Internet Explorer for free. They took it upon themselves to try to do that too. So. Mm-hmm. There was this whole thing where they held developer conference across the street from Netscape that year yeah. instead of having it in Redmond, mm-hmm. and they took a big E mm-hmm. that they had for their party. I guess yeah. at the end of the party, they took that and carried it over and dumped it into Netscape's fountain outside their building. <laughs> I remember using IE six, and it, I don't remember it being the stuff. I remember it being better, the th- the best thing I could get my hands on <laughs> at home. Well, the problem, yeah, <laughs> the problem too was you have to remember, um, the real issue there was that Internet Explorer six worked great, but in order to really work great, mm-hmm. the websites had to code specifically for Internet Explorer because they weren't doing standards. Yeah, they were doing a lot of non-standard stuff to make that faster. So it's kind of like with um, the video cards now where you have NVIDIA and, and the AMD mm-hmm. but then, then the, the game makers are writing special hooks that take advantage of some NVIDIA stuff that they've written in mm-hmm. their drivers mm-hmm. which gives them an edge but it's not because they're doing anything standard they're doing some specific proprietary stuff Yeah, and that's what's getting a lot of people upset. Right, So it was kind of the same thing, but in the time when the internet was trying to build on a bunch of standards, Microsoft was going outside of those and doing a lot of proprietary stuff, which really irritated a lot of people. Understandable, but hey, that's what Microsoft does. That's the other thing about both of those hooks. Like they, that's what no, no, no. You, hmm? that's what Microsoft did. That is true. Yes, they have, they they have, have changed. They have, they've, they've, they've they have embraced standards so hard to where I think it's hurting them more than it's helping. I think it's helping them. I don't know. I mean, they're, putting, they're putting Linux inside of Windows 10, where you could actually run Linux stuff inside the OS. I know, and that's beautiful <laughs> because it's, to me, it's like it's it's like someone was like, "Well, why do you want to use Linux?" So it's like you don't understand the power of Bash, and then it's like, "Well, you can do that in, in Windows now." The f- I'm gonna ever go to that thing, man. <laughs> I'm out of driver hell now. You know, it's awesome. It's a great idea. Like, I love the, but like the aspect of Microsoft because Microsoft makes money off of Office, you know, and trying to keep, yeah, and they've got the subscription. Well, they make money off of Office and subscription and the servers and, and servers That's where they make all their cash you know. and subscri- and they're trying to be like Apple and be like a subscription based operating system. You know? They always wanted to do that. They've always wanted to do subscription based applications. They've just never been able to kind of make it work. But now they can with yeah. the with the the way the internet has been embraced and, and actually subscription software is starting to be embraced, they were like, finally, we could do what we've always wanted to do. Right. Um, and other people are doing the same thing, too. I mean, a lot of people are doing, like Adobe, you know, they switched all of their software over to subscription-based software. Yeah, I've got to get better in PowerShell this year. That was That's actually one of my New Year's resolutions to get better in PowerShell this year. Um I was actually working on a PowerShell issue today, as a matter of fact. Oh, the, I, uh, I, I, I want you to know, I haven't started on it. <laughs> I've started to work on PowerShell stuff, so I'll get to it. PowerShell is great, though. Let me tell you, PowerShell is powerful, and it is awesome. All right, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I don't. Okay, honestly, like I, I bet it is. I th- the my my biggest jump into it is because I don't use it, and it's like. I I have to jump into something that like complete noob into something again. I was like, oh, oh I understand completely. But I've got it's kind of it kind of passed me by a little bit too because I was always doing uh, so I would do scripting and just regular DOS scripting for a long time and then yeah. I got into. Need PowerShell for a long time and mm-hmm. now it's all PowerShell based. So I kind of got behind the curve on it. Yeah. And now I'm scrambling to catch up, but it's still coding. It's still, once you know how to code, mm-hmm. all you need to learn is the syntax. Mm. That's, that's true with any language. You learn the code. Or you learn how, how programming works, right? Mm-hmm. If, you, if you don't just learn a language you're, and you're actually learning how to program, mm-hmm. 
that's the way you should be doing it because then you know how to code in any language. You just pick up the syntax and you just roll right into it. How do I do an if then? How do I do a for next? How do I do case statements? Mm -hmm. All that stuff. Once you you know you know what they're for and how they're used, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what language you're using. And, and it's all PowerShell is is basically a programming language. Um, it's a it's a powerful scripting programming type of language. Yeah. That's really all it is. So yeah. once you know how to do that, it doesn't really matter. You just learn the syntax, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah, because I'm with you. I'm just you know I just you know I did command line. Yeah, you know, I can do CMD. And then just like screw it, I just do it in like just doing DOS, or if I really can't do it, do it to it. Since I did mostly with networking, I could get away with just making shell scripts. It's easy, you know. But if I have to mess right, so but but here's the difference, right? So when you're doing when you're doing a uh, a shell script or, mm -hmm. or a DOS script, mm -hmm. to to do one thing, you have to write a bunch of code to kind of make this happen. Yes. In PowerShell, there's already a command to do that. They've already they've already written the scripting for you. You just access the the PowerShell command that they've made available for you to do the work that you've already that you would have to try and write from scratch to make happen. Hmm. Hmm. That's where the power comes in because you're not having to reinvent the wheel on things that people do all the time with PowerShell. Hmm. Yeah. There's sometimes there's a lot of that, um, or just like when you just yeah because. When you're just trying to write simple shell scripts, so like I just wanted to do this, you know, or I just wanted to like I want to in push updates. Something don't push up if something doesn't get update. Tell me, or if when things finish update, tell this. Tell this. And if you don't know this already, if you're a Windows admin, uh, like Wicked Kinder says, he's he's always done small enterprise systems. Mm -hmm. Script Center, Microsoft Script Center is the best repository for scripts, not just PowerShell. They've got Visual Basic scripts. They've got all kinds of scripts. The power, the the guys who run Script Center are some of the funniest men you'll ever meet. Inside some of their code that they've done is some of the funniest jokes you've ever read. Oh, wow. Um, they're, they're hilarious. Um, and the community has gathered around them, and they are submitting code after code after code to this repository. You can go there and just about find anything you want to do somebody's already written something for you take it <laughs> modify it as you want and you go yep yep okay yeah yeah hey that's uh, like um honestly that's how a lot of uh, that's how actually i learned scripts was looking just like i need to do this thing right and then i look at someone else's script like okay this is how you do it then you would i would just read their script and like okay how did they make x do x you know do y and i would it's read the, it's the best way to learn it yes it's the best but once you have a little bit of a background that's the best way to learn especially a new syntax for a language watch what other people have done already that's successful um and you're not technically stealing you're just learning the process so that you can do it yourself yeah yeah you're sort of stealing. It's not stealing. It's, okay. it's not stealing. The code's still there. It's just code. Yeah. It's math. Math and code. Code is free, man. Code should be free and shared. Yeah. Code should be free and <laughs> shared, man. Okay. All right. It's open up on the internet, dude. Use this. Oh, man. All right. So, uh, I want to keep going, but... I'm I'm gonna I can't keep talking. We'll save that. We'll save that for the uh, for the other podcast, the tech podcast. Yeah, I can't which keep. You're yeah, going to do. Yeah, which I am going to do because, like, I kind of do. I, I think I'm like I think we may just want to do like maybe we should just do like small tech projects on it. Like we just get on do tech projects. That'd be fun. Yeah, you could do like uh, the first half talking about uh, the latest news and just have general roundtable discussion, and then say, okay, now we're going to start the project, and we just do a project based part of it because i really do want to sit down and uh, take this board that i have right here and get it ready for christy and say um, this is a uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, uh, wi-fi tumor board that's what this board is meant for uh, and what i wanted to do would build it to it and put on a better antenna and so christy will be able to get um better wi-fi while she's at work <laughs> it's and we'll just we'll just uh, order a bunch of raspberry pies and have a lot of fun. Well, that works too. We could do this too, but this isn't this more fun on the board? Do it, street board. Oh, I want I want breadboards, man. They don't. I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. What? I, what? No, I bought breadboards the other day. 
Oh, did you? No, I'm talking about um, more of the uh, th- these white breadboards where you actually had wire to wire spots, and you you can build it that way. Yeah, so you're not board. doing the you're not doing the file the like this the foil and stuff in them. With this, right? To the cam breadboard. Let's see it first. There you talk. Okay, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, you yeah. get this all the time. You get from um, Raspberry Pi do? stuff. Okay, so see, I used to go to Radio Shack for that stuff, and you can't go to Radio Shack for that stuff anymore. It's so annoying to me because I liked going in and just touching it and looking at it. Now, I wish that's like see, the one, Fry's does a little bit of it. Yeah, Fry's does. Do they, don't, they don't really embrace it like like a Radio Shack used to do, and I just miss touching the tactile thing. You know what always sucked for me? Because growing up, I was at the tail end. I never really got the fun of going into Radio Shack and getting something cool. I never got that. I never got that. When when I really first... When I really started going to Radio Shack, right, they were mostly just doing cell phones and pagers and stuff like that. So, like, I never really got to uh, that cool part of Radio Shack. You know, it was like... And, you know, when I got my computer parts, I went to swap meets, you know, and stuff like that. So I never really got to go to that. Oh, man, we went to Radio Shack and got these cool parts. To me, it was like, man, I must have been a cool Radio Shack, man. I... I didn't to do that. <laughs> they were the cool Radio Shack, so they just kind of faded out of existence. You know? I remember, they weren't making the money anymore. I, mean, I remember when I first someone was telling me, oh, this is about Radio Shack, and I saw one in a mall, and I was like, oh, it's a freaking Radio Shack. Oh, my God. I went in there. were like, what the f*** is this? <laughs> this is a, yeah. These are lies. Yeah. Page are no, lies. I, I, I remember the day I went into Radio Shack and was like, where's where's the, the good stuff? We got it back in the back. We have to go ask for it got the special key code or something what what's going on here yeah. you know and they're like no we just you know we don't do as much of that anymore they still had like a little place in the back where you could buy transistors and resistors and a little, all the fun stuff but it was smaller and just not not the same okay kinder got another people one of these people showing their age i've never got into the hardware side of things even though my start in it was soldering together mark was it mark four terminal adapter for sco unix paper oh whoa whoa paper white terminals no see i still get them beat and i just i'll just say this and i win i know it already what i worked on radar systems that were vacuum tube brand See, like when Ryan Oak keeps talking about the computer, I always, I always, you know, picture when you was like, I remember when I was working at my first computer, and you were like winding it up, <laughs> had to power it with a pedal, like the old uh, sewing machines. That's how we ran it. <laughs> but anyways, like I said, I, but <laughs> yeah, you got oh freaking old, old elders of the internet. Remember when everyone had were asked, which who are the no, men? when when hmm? somebody was talking about the internet, the the age of the internet or whatever, the anniversary of the internet, and they're talking about Tim Berners Lee, the the person who invented the internet. I'm like, no, 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 no. You guys don't understand. <laughs> he did not invent the internet. He invented markup language for websites. Yes, that's what he invented. Correct. That's not. Correct. That's how you view the internet, maybe, but that's not how. How? That's not the internet. How? The fact was really funny is they try to say the government invented the internet when the government fought tooth and nail for for TCIP TCP/IP to become the standard uh, routing protocol. They did not want TCP/IP to be the. It got they got overridden by yes. the by the. Um, Education systems and the other people who the, the other companies who were coming on board at the time. Yeah, and the actual yep, yep, yep. They actually like yeah. The the United States government kept doing this, and they came up with a standard, and it, they all agreed on a standard, and this is what we're going to use. And the government goes like, "No, we don't want to use that. Fuck your system. <laughs> Fuck your system. <laughs> this is better." I said, yeah, we're gonna do what we want, and that's why people think that the the internet is a testament of government stuff. No, no. no. Yep. The, the internet is a wild west show and it always has been and should still be and unfortunately it's not anymore but that's what made it the great because the best things won out yep. most of the time not all the time yeah not all the time <laughs> but for the most, most, most for the most part I mean Cisco inventing routers I mean that was if it wasn't for what Cisco did there would have been no internet 
we'd try to be direct line token ring nonsense that's out there. There's was, was no routing. It would have been a mess. We were going to run out of IP addresses, if you remember, 15 years ago. And because someone invented the ability to do, you know, the, the I can't remember the name of it now. Nat and so subnetting. Uh, yeah, natting, natting. natting. I keep wanting to say nap. Yeah, NAP, NAP, no, 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 network no, like, yeah, stuff doing the network head. allocation yeah, but, tables. And yeah, the natting allowed people to have their own local IP addresses and still be able to function, mm-hmm. you know, on the internet so we didn't run of IP addresses. Yeah, and the idea that you can subnet a subnet, which is even more ridiculous. Oh, yeah, subnets used to be class A, B, or C. You had, you know, mm-hmm. a very different way of doing it than when you could sub... Uh, <laughs> Subclass those. No value. You were able to just really have it. That's when IS, IP, ISPs really took off. Is when they realized they could do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I remember like when I was learning subnetting, and then someone goes like, "Okay, now we're gonna subnet the subnet." I was like, "Dear God, <laughs> who needs this many addresses? You're create a black hole, man. <laughs> you don't need this many ad- IP addresses, and, you know." And it's but then again, like. And then, like, when you really get out there, you realize, like, you can use as many addresses as you want. You know, you could just be wasteful sometimes in some places, or sometimes you got to. Some like, places are wasteful. There, there are companies who have class A's. Mm-hmm. They have all they own all of those IP addresses, and they use a tenth of them. Yep. Maybe. Yeah. So people are trying to go to those guys and buy those IP address blocks, and they're making money just selling those off, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's but, and that's why when you look at what happened with IPv6, you're like IPv6 is really cool because it does open up a whole thing where you can have every single device stop. everywhere have its own IP no, address. Stop. stop trying to make IPv6 happen. It ain't gonna happen. Stop but it's it. just it ain't it's gonna just happen. not going to get adopted for a long time. It's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. Stop trying to make it happen. Stop trying to make it happen. IPv6 never going to because, gonna. because now we're going we don't want okay so we don't want every single light switch have its own external IP address because if you do that you're easily hacked if you do it behind the NAT and have your own local IP addresses doing it then you're secure and safe it makes more sense so you don't want that to happen I'm now confused so no 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 up with NATs down with IPv6 because no one wants to no one wants to like hey ping my IP address okay what's your address ff.26 <laughs> no one wants that everyone wants a simple address of 192.168.1.1 that's what people want no you give you give each one of your IPv6 addresses a separate DNS entry and you just give them the DNS name. No, because I don't want to come up with names because I come up with stupid names. Hall Light Switch. Oh, that's dumb. Kitchen that's a dumb light. name. Kitchen no, light. no one wants to ping that. No one wants to ping Kitchen Light, okay? Refrigerator. No one's going to ping that. They're going to ping, like, ping Smurfette, ping Smur- left Smurfette, They're, or it's going to ping Easter, ping Chicago. I'm going to come up with stupid names to things because I'm to be on 10 pots of coffee when I'm programming this network. I don't need to put names into things. Oh, the names are cool because everybody always used names that were more specific. Like there was a book I read where, in the examples of naming of the servers, they were naming uh, characters out of uh, Terry Pratchett's novels. Hmm. And I'm like, yes, I got this guy. This guy's my guy. I'm writing. I'm reading his books from now on. <laughs> <laughs> I used to. Uh, um, I used to name. Um servers and cars like uh, I used to name them my uh, motor Mo- motor cars or cars so yeah I had like routers it was like uh, this thing's a uh, LT351 uh, and then I had the 4AGE uh, which they look like regular like just like to some people just serial number nothing but to me they were just car motors that I would just know Okay, yeah. So that's um, just me. We have al- we we have gone a little off the track. Yeah, just a little. Well, it's a little off. Just a little off the track. I to me, I blame all the cold medicine. So I don't know. What you, so you got to find an excuse for yourself, uh, right? Also, go ahead, let's wrap the sucker up in a bow, so I can stop talking and he can breathe. <laughs> uh, so wrapping up in a bowl. Uh, yeah, the industry is going to figure this stuff out. We're going to be fine. No need to. Sc- worry 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 but we have to be sure we are taking care of ourselves and we are forcing companies to think about security because a lot of companies don't that's not that's like the last thing they think about so 
the people like Microsoft and the people like Google and Apple who are actually looking out for security because they, they need to for their clients. Thank them for, for doing the work. Uh, they're not doing as good a job as we'd like to see, but they're doing something and they're trying and they're going to get there eventually, I think. It's a constant battle, but we're working on it. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Security is like a lot of these things. A lot of these internet IoT devices are lasting on their mind, especially if they're fly by night. Kickstarter projects, you know. Um, but a lot of those. But I also feel bad for these Kickstarter projects because a lot of that culture is based off of because of the terrible laws of the U United States. Put it was not FEC. Um, oh crap. Um, what's the place? I can't think of the uh, three little agency that puts the regulations off of investing or investing into properties because if he was able to just buy, easy, e makes it easier to, for people to just buy shares and invest into companies, you could probably get Kickstarter probably be a better place because it would actually be established and, or establishing bigger companies and allowing people to easily to buy and sell uh, investing in shares into companies. I can't remember the term of it right now because it hurts right here. Um, but yeah, uh, sorry, um, so yeah, uh, so thank you for tuning in for Low-Key Wall, what? Did you? FTC. Is it FTC? I'm not. Federal I'm not Trade Commission? Sure. Yes, 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 yeah, because it's all, like, it's a huge mess of trying to trade and buy and sell shares, which would be so much easier because if someone just said, like, hey, you know, like, because the whole reward tier would be different because it's like, no, 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 you donate $100, you get this many shares into this company, and you will get this paid back, so you'll be able to in actually invest in the companies instead of, like, hey, we'll give you this goofy t-shirt, you know, you possibly get this project, no, you can actually get investments and, in, you know, people, pro you know, get more things. Woo! Like it are thank you for the thank you for the hundred bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sitting there on cold medicine, good hundred bits. I maybe I should you know, maybe I should do more cold medicine. I'm, I'm not gonna do more cold medicine on the air, I did enough. Um thanks for the hundred bits. Um but yeah, this is the thanks for thank you, Paul, for jumping in with the uh, with the FTC comment. Um Escalaja Escalaja applause Thousand bits. Thank you, Escalade applause for the thousand bitties. <laughs> <laughs> Worth every penny. <laughs> that was very delayed there on that cheers note. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, thank you everybody for the thank you for the bits. Thank you for tuning in. To, uh, and to, uh, yes, I could buy a lot of cold medicine with that. Yes, I can. And I'd like to thank you guys. Uh, I used to took some of the uh, um, that, and I could probably go buy some like another two pack of the uh, Nyquil Dayquil two packers, you know, or go to the thing and get my gigantic thing of Alka Seltzer again. So I'd like to thank you everybody for doing that. Um, Hopefully I'll be up walking around to be able to go to um, Triton this Friday. If I'm not at Triton this Friday, um, hopefully because I just tried for myself another, uh, just just trying to rest up so I can go to Brick World this Saturday, which is the Lego place at the fairgrounds this Saturday. I'm hoping to go to Brick World, which uh, if I can get a steady internet connection in Brick World, I'll probably stream um, while I'm at Brick World with uh, Gunther and Meatloaf. Um, so, hmm. If you don't show up to Liberty and Chill this week, I'll find my way to your house. It's gonna find me. It's gonna find me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just knock on doors until I find the right one. Just gonna keep knocking on doors. <laughs> just gonna go up to random places looking for my car. Like, uh, yes, is this uh, uh <laughs> looking for a, a a Mr. Princess Twilight Sparkle? Yeah. Which um the nurse that uh, the um not the nurse but the doc uh what was it the dietitian who looked over Ruby uh, today uh, she had a um, um rarity um pin on so I was like I was very happy about that so yeah so anyways thank you for tuning in to Low Key Wall I see you guys this, possibly this Friday um Friday or Saturday at Brick World or next week for Tuesday for regular schedule we are libertarians um. I can finally bounce back from this cold and be go on strong. Um, I'm ready to re up on some because I haven't seen Chris in a long time and I miss him. And I miss doing wall and I miss, you know so I don't know it's, you know I kind of enjoyed this small little vacay but you know yeah. 
I, I miss it. I miss seeing people. You know, because I like to stay away from... Because one thing I'm going to leave everyone away with, if you're sick, stay home. Don't go out and get people sick. Just stay at home. It's that easy. You know, be sick at home. Don't go out. Stay home. All right. You have my permission to ignore that. No, no, no. Don't listen to Escola Jalplas, okay? No, 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 no. You specifically. I, I can't ignore my own my, my own advice. I'm a hypocrite to think I am. Okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> all of us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys. Thank you.